This is Heart Rhythm TV, and I am Dan Alias, reporting from HRS 2023 here in New Orleans. Um, and I'm joined today by the authors of the Encore VT late breaking clinical trial, studying stereotactic radiation for refractory VT ablation. Um, congratulations on a great study. Um, Phil Kukulich, the lead author here, um, welcome. You know, EP is a team sport, and I love the multidisciplinary nature of this practice. So go ahead, Phil, and introduce your team. Great. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate this opportunity. This is wonderful to be here today and be able to talk about this. As you mentioned, I'm Phil Kukulich. I'm a heart rhythm specialist at Washington University. To my left is Cliff Robinson. He's a radiation oncologist, so he treats lung tumors by day and treats VT, I guess, by night. Um, <laughs> Cliff and I co-direct our Center for Non-Invasive Cardiac Radiotherapy. To Cliff's left is Dr. Stacy Robbins, uh, Stacy Rentschler, you guys are married now, <laughs> Stacy Rentschler, um, who is uh, a cardiologist and a translational scientist. She leads our scientific arm of the Conquer Center for Non-Invasive Radiotherapy. Well, I mean, um, you know, wonderful work you all are doing. I mean, we need tools in our tool chest for managing VT. You know, it's, it's one of our most vexing opponents in EP. So congratulations on a, on a great study. Five year data, right? Phase one and two, 19 patients enrolled. Phil, can you summarize kind of what you learned in the study you did? Yeah, this is um, the extension arm essentially of the Encore VT trial. So Encore VT was a phase one, phase two trial. So that's a safety and efficacy trial. This was a trial that we started back in 2017. And we really wanted to understand, was focused radiation safe for patients? And did it have an effect on helping patients with VT? Specifically talking about reducing the burden of VT. And we did this in patients who had already failed conventional therapy. These were patients who already had catheter ablations, oftentimes several and had already had multiple antiarrhythmic medicines. And so these patients were treated with 25 gray, which is the dose of radiation, in a single fraction. So one session, the patient comes in, lays down, Cliff and his team treat that patient, and then we followed those patients and compared the burden of VT in the six months before to the six months afterwards. And more importantly for this study, we followed these patients longitudinally to see if there was going to be any adverse effect of radiation. And so we published the original report of this back in 2019. It was a late breaker at uh, American Heart Association. I remember that. Yeah. And this is the five-year follow-up that we worked with the US FDA to really understand what the results of focused radiation would be. And the important upshot from this clinical trial was that there were no radiation-related deaths in our group we saw six instances of radiation-related adverse events that were serious. Four of those six involved the pericardium. So we had two pericarditis, two pericardial effusions. Those could be managed with medications. They were not serious types of adverse events. We did have one patient who developed advancing mitral regurgitation and required a mitral clip to fix. And importantly, we had one patient who developed a gastropericardial fistula three years down the road. That was our most serious yeah. complication. And importantly, we learned from that. That fistula was surgically repaired. We went back and looked at the plans that we had treated, and Cliff and his team adjusted the way that we move forward, and I don't think that that's a likely outcome moving forward. I think that when you push the frontier like you are, you know, and you, and you, and you take a learning mindset, you know, I mean, things can happen, but the fact is that you learned and you're pushing the boundaries forward, so I, can, I congratulate you. Thanks. I, th I think it's really important to be honest with the data, yeah. right? And be open and really closely follow these patients as we move forward. As you've seen, there's been over a dozen centers now who have published single center case series that radioablation works. It seems to reduce the burden of VT in some very refractory patients. Yeah. But we don't have longitudinal data, and that's what makes this data so special today. Absolutely. Now, Cliff, I'd like to turn to you, the radiation oncologist in the room. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what is the patient experience of undergoing stereotactic radio ablation? Yeah, thanks for asking. I, I think what's exciting for, for me and my team is uh, early on we weren't sure if this was going to be a distinctly different population of patients. We had to alter our workflows, but really the experience is the same for any patient undergoing cancer treatment. Uh, you check in, you walk up to the room, 
you make sure that we're treating the right area by pointing to your heart. <laughs> you walk in, lay down, uh, and uh, over anywhere from a five to a 15 minute period, completely awake, no anesthesia, in your street clothes, often the, often the case, uh, listening to some music, uh, you receive a treatment and they walk out and they're done. Uh, so this is a daily occurrence uh, and in our clinic is one of the busier radiation clinics in the country that's you know, hundreds of patients per day, but it's just an in and out outpatient treatment for most patients and, and as it turns out for these ones as well, it's really no different. Wow, I mean, I wish I could promise that for VT ablation. <laughs> Not close currently, at least with catheters. Um, so another interesting piece of information that I learned, um, so you're treating with 25 gray, and that's not necessarily cardiotoxic, but maybe but we are affecting cardiac myocyte conduction velocity. So Stacy, uh, uh, you have a great perspective on all this. Would you fill us in on kind of your work and, and the impact? Absolutely. So Phil and Cliff first, you know, approached me when the remarkable efficacy of the first patients, you know, that they were just having such a dramatic reduction of VT and, you know, to kind of help figure out what, what was going on. So at 25 gray, it appears that the myocytes are not dying. There's no, you know, immediate fibrosis. And, you know, the effect of the therapy is pretty quick, you know, within days to weeks. So fibrosis takes a very long time to occur. So we looked at some of the hearts from patients who received the therapy and we couldn't tell where the therapy was delivered by looking at fibrosis. And these are the same patients who had a remarkable reduction, maybe 100 episodes a month to zero. So we knew it had to be something, you know, not scar related, not making new scar to ablate. So then we looked at uh, animal models um, to look at um, what was happening to the properties of the tissue itself. And we looked at two things that are important for sustaining reentrant ventricular tachycardia, so conduction velocity and uh, refractory periods. And we found that the conduction velocity was actually increased in the surviving myocardium in these hearts. So um, that was a theoretical way to be an antiarrhythmic mechanism, um, but it appears that, you know, in at least in the animal models, that it's actually increasing conduction velocity. So a sick heart downregulates a lot of important genes that uh, regulate conduction, like connexins, gap junctions, um, sodium currents, yeah. and this can increase after one dose. And the other very important finding was that after one dose of 25 gray, the effect persisted as long as we could, you know, look. So um, it's actually having a durable effect on gene expression that has a functional effect in the tissue. Very interesting. I really think that we're learning so much in this space and you all are blazing the way. So final question, I'll, and I'll direct both to Phil and Cliff, I think here. Prospective trial coming, right? Can you give us some information about that? And, um, you know, just tell us what your, what your plans are. What's the future look like? No, I, I think, uh, uh, you know, when you hit this point where you have a lot of enthusiasm and a, and a lot of single arm series in individual institutions, uh, the very next thing to do at, at this critical juncture is to then ask the question the right way and that's in a randomized trial. Uh, without comparative arms, uh, it's very difficult to control for those confounders. Uh, and so we're really excited to be able to say that we now have uh, partnering with uh, Varian, who is the sponsor of a clinical trial. We have the Radiate VT study it's a international, multi-center, randomized, pivotal clinical trial run through the FDA uh, under IDE uh, that will be testing repeat catheter ablation versus cardiac radioablation in patients who have high-risk refractory VT. So right, pop right population, testing it in the same people that we've uh, been doing the phase one studies to date uh, and trying to answer the question for good. And I think what's really critical about a study like this is that there's a lot of uncertainty. These patients are sick. Many of them don't live very long. Uh, and the only way to know uh, how much of that is due to the therapy versus the natural history of the disease is to have that straight comparison. We're extremely excited. And there's a lot of uh, really exciting endpoints that are buried into this as well to look at the biology and some of the other uh, physiologic aspects of this. Uh, and it is now open and accruing patients today. One thing that seems to be particularly difficult, when you talk to patients, we've got two therapies that we're offering them in a one-to-one -one randomized way. One of them involves six to seven hours worth of an invasive treatment, and one of them involves six to seven minutes mm. laying on a table listening to music. Yeah. So we, we are going to struggle, I think, when we talk about randomizing our patients. I think when you look at what the patients want, and 
they will want less invasive, they will want quicker, safer, faster. That's what we're, the hypothesis that we're trying to study on the Radiate VT trial. Awesome. Well, thank you all for joining us. Congratulations. And thank you all for tuning in to Heart Rhythm TV.